Frank Lloyd Wright. Oh, the man, the myth, the legend, the all-American architect we all know and love. Known around the world for his innovative designs and massive contributions to the field of architecture, 4, 2, 5, 400, and 25 houses. Despite Frank Lloyd Wright's successes and all of his accomplishments, it's been said that Frank Lloyd Wright was a bad architect because all of his buildings have a persistent problem with leaks. Why does Frank Lloyd Wright buildings leak? What or who causes these leaks? And does Frank Lloyd Wright really deserve the recognition as America's greatest architect? You and I have questions, and in this video, we're going to uncover the hidden truths behind why most Frank Lloyd Wright buildings leak. We're gonna start at the roof of this house by Frank Lloyd Wright and work our way down. One of the key factors as to why most Frank Lloyd Wright buildings leak is, you probably already guessed it, the design of the roofs. I know, it's a shocker, isn't it? But actually, there's a lot more to it than that. Wright was well known for many reasons, but during that time, flat roofs were not extremely common. They were still being worked out. And back then, they were much more prone to leaks than sloped roofs. A flat roof is more accurately a low sloping roof, usually around a quarter inch rise for every one foot of distance it spans. Unlike today though, most of Frank Lloyd Wright's roofs were designed to be just about completely flat. They require a completely different type of waterproofing method and material, and if they aren't constructed properly, they can result in leaks over time. On top of this, Frank Lloyd Wright enjoyed placing large areas of glass on the roof, which creates a much higher chance of water getting through if they are not properly sealed or constructed. There's a well-known story of a house called Wingspread that Frank Lloyd Wright designed for the heir of the Johnson Wax Company. The heir's name was H.F. Johnson Jr., but a lot of people just called him Hitch. Wright built him a home in 1939. Soon after, a dinner party was hosted during a thunderstorm and the rain was leaking through the roof. Hibbs' son stated it was a solid stream of water pouring down right on top of H.F. Johnson Jr.'s head. He became infuriated and phoned Wright in Phoenix, Arizona to complain. He told Wright it was leaking on him and Wright responded very loudly, loud enough for the rest of the room to hear, Well, Hib, why don't you just scoot your chair over? It probably goes without saying that if this story is true, then Wright's overall perspective on the issue is that minor issues like leaks we're just a part of the package when you receive an innovative and beautiful home designed by him. Another key factor as to why a lot of his buildings leak is that Frank Lloyd Wright used a lot of very curious or unique materials. A lot of people might even assume by the materials that he was choosing that he was actually trying to make the roofs leak. This is obviously not true, but Wright was a very innovative and forward-thinking designer. He did not always put his designs or materials through rigorous testing or experimentation. He enjoyed playing with the capabilities of materials and altering their conventional form, as any great architect should do. In order to innovate, you have to push the limits, although it's possible Frank Lloyd Wright took it too far. In some cases, materials were not tested thoroughly, which if implemented into the building, could obviously create some future or immediate problems with leaks, water damage, and moisture getting in. Over time, the materials can break down and worsen the damage. Among many other innovative materials in Frank Lloyd Wright buildings, the most notable are his Pyrex glassworks, glass bricks, precast concrete blocks, and intricate woodwork. He used zinc canes when everyone else was using lead. He created custom-made light fittings, and he even patented his prism glass tiles in 1897. Next, let's check out the inner workings of the walls. There is actually countless different materials and methods that are used during construction to actually keep water from entering in the building over time. One could even say that this is one of the fundamental aspects or goals of an architect, or should be the goals of an architect, is to create a waterproof structure that has a really acceptable life cycle. Two elements are critical components in preventing leaks in buildings, flashing and sealing, among many other things. Frank Lloyd Wright, being a headstrong modern and somewhat minimalist designer, he continuously omitted or minimized flashing and sealants in his designs. As a result of this, water can easily seep into the building envelope and cause damage to the interior and the rest of the structure. Poor drainage on a flat roof is a huge problem, and this was the case in some of his work. Poor drainage leads to standing water, and the problem with standing water on a roof is that that water wants to go somewhere. It's gonna find the path of least resistance down to the ground. During this journey that it takes, it's gonna create as much problems and 
damage as it possibly can within the building envelope. This problem is increasingly important to be aware of in areas with heavy annual rainfall because this causes water to be constantly standing on the roof. One way or another, the water has to go somewhere, and more often than not, that's right into the building envelope and into the interior spaces. We've heard about the roof, materials, and the walls of the house. Let's look at how the foundation affects the leaks in buildings. Poor drainage can happen in other areas of the building too. Let's say for instance, the walls or the foundation. Poor foundation leads to poor drainage and vice versa. A badly constructed foundation or how the very bottom of a sidewall is terminated are the main causes of water leakages into the walls of a home. And last on our list of key reasons as to why Frank Lloyd Wright buildings leak is improper maintenance. Over time, a building has to be maintained. Roof damage, termites, rodents, UV damage, thermal expansion, wind, creeping plants, vandalism, and much more cause the deterioration of a building over time. All of these problems, more often than not, can be prevented by someone taking proper care of a building. Unfortunately, little old Frank can't come over every Sunday and mow their grass and walk the roof looking for holes. Proper maintenance is absolutely key in preventing leaks in any building. Negligent and improper care of a building is one thing. Then when you add that on top of all the other problems we listed before, it's a recipe for disaster. In my opinion, I strongly enjoy Frank Lloyd Wright buildings. I think they're innovative and they're really nicely positioned within America's architectural history. I mean, Falling Water was built in 1936, Guggenheim in 1939, Taliesin was originally built in 1911, and the SC Johnson's headquarters was built in 1939. That being said though, if a little more attention and care was placed on the longevity and construction methods of his buildings, I don't think it would have mattered much unless they were thoroughly taken care of and maintained weekly, if not daily. After all is said and done, there are several factors that contribute to the leaks in Frank Lloyd Wright buildings, including the design of the roofs, the use of untested materials, a lack of proper waterproofing, poor drainage systems, and a lack of proper maintenance. A lot of these issues are extremely challenging to address, especially if the properties don't have the ample funds to maintain the building. Although, many Frank Lloyd Wright buildings have been successfully restored and maintained over the years. With good care, they can easily become and remain iconic structures that will continue to thrive for generations to come. If you liked the video, please like the video and consider subscribing down below if you want to see future content just like this. Also, over there are two architecture related videos that I think you'll really enjoy. If you want to support the channel further, consider checking out the Patreon. Patreon is where you can get a lot of cool architecture related benefits and your name gets featured at the end of the videos like these amazing people right here. Regardless though, thank you for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.